Hey guys, how are you all? My name is Harshid Devedi friends and I welcome you back to my video. So in this video friends, I am going to talk about this topic productivity of aquatic ecosystem. Actually, we are going to discuss those factors which affect the productivity of a particular aquatic ecosystem. This I have also slightly discussed in my, you know, this types of ecosystems video, the natural ecosystem, man-made ecosystem. So there I also discussed the aquatic ecosystem. So there I have discussed this briefly, but now I am, you know, in very detail, I will be expressing, you know, explaining this topic to you. For example, because this is basically a very specific topic for which many people are requesting to me. So this is presented by me, Harshit Devedi friends. If you want to follow me, the link of my Instagram profile is given in the description box below. This video is in English. If you want to watch the Hindi version of the video, the link of that is also given below. Now, what is productivity of an aquatic ecosystem? friends? The very first thing. Suppose this is an aquatic ecosystem. This is the surface of the water. And obviously, this is a water body. Now, in this water body, planktons are there, fishes are there, big fishes are there. And if it is an ocean, then whales and dolphins are also there. Sun is at the top and it is shining quite good at this water body. So, obviously, this sun is throwing light on water bodies, all water bodies, whether it is an inland water body or it is sea or ocean. So, actually, sun is providing energy to each and every water body. What happened, friends? I have talked to you about two zones. Photic zone and aphotic zone. I also explained to you about limnetic zone. So here I am assuming that you know about all of these zones. If you don't know it, I would recommend you that in the description box below there is a you know link in which I have told you uh, the aquatic ecosystem zones. So there I have discussed photic zone, aphotic zone, limnetic zone, profounder zone, pelagic zone, neritic zone, intertidal zone benthic zone so all of these zones i have explained you and these zones whenever you are studying environment and ecology the names of these zones would be occurring very regularly so you should know that what these zones are so obviously the photic zone is that zone where light is actually present for example you saw on the surface 100 units of light is forming so till the depth where one unit of light is reaching this will be known as photic zone okay so you we very well know that what is photic zone and the complete activity of photosynthesis is carried on this in this photic zone. So in this photic zone, photosynthesis and respiration is going on. So if the main primary production and the photosynthetic activity is going on in the photic zone, so the complete photosynthesis is going on in photic zone. So in photic zone, photosynthesis and respiration both are happening and below it in the aphotic zone, for example, below it is completely the aphotic zone. So in this aphotic zone, only respiration is taking place, photosynthesis is not taking place in the aphotic zone. So this is why this photic zone becomes important. Now one thing friends, the biggest factor which we came to know from this explanation is sunlight is the very first factor which is going to affect the productivity of an ecosystem. Because when sunlight will fall on a particular body of water obviously it is going to penetrate the surfaces of the water now how much that sunlight is going to penetrate the surface of the water will depend upon the fact that how much transparent the water is how clean the water is and how much turbidity is in their water okay so if the water is quite transparent so obviously the sunlight are going to penetrate much deeper inside the water and if they are going to penetrate much deeper inside the water then obviously the photic zone will be quite big if the photic zone will be built, then the area available for photosynthetic activity will be quite big. So obviously the food product, food produced will be in sufficient quantity. So obviously the food web will be quite developed, species diversity will be quite high. And if there is presence of turbidity in the water, so that presence of turbidity in the water will restrict the penetration of sunlight in the water. So if turbidity is there, I'm really sorry, I've written this spelling not clearly at t-u-r-b-i-d-i-t-y so if turbidity is in there in the water then the penetration of sunlight in the water will be very limited and when the penetration of sunlight in the water will be very limited then obviously the photic zone of the water the limnetic zone of the water will be very limited and when these zones will be limited the area available for photosynthesis activity will be very limited food produced will be very limited food web will not be very much developed and species diversity will also be low so the system the aquatic system will not be productive okay so a whole lot is depending on the sunlight here friends okay so you understood turbidity now why this turbidity is happening 
this is happening due to eutrophication this is one important factor eutrophication can be man made eutrophication that is cultural eutrophication or it can be natural eutrophication on eutrophication i have also made a video i will if i will remember i will give a link in the description box below otherwise you can go to my environment and ecology playlist and there you go to form find all the videos of environment friends see one thing you should keep in mind friends that if you want to learn environment and ecology you have to connect the topics with other topics there is nothing in, in you know environment when you are not connecting things you have to connect the dots you have to intermingle the concepts associate one concept with the other concept and the moment you will start doing it you will start understanding environment and ecology so photic zone aphotic zone sunlight sunlight the role of sunlight becomes important here okay now the very next thing that we are going to talk about is temperature okay friends what is the role of temperature see suppose an aquatic sea ecosystems are there and in that aquatic ecosystem a lot of organisms would be there lot of aquatic organism to be precise would be there now those aquatic organisms have adapted themselves to a specific temperature range for example in a water body we can say that according to the geological conditions and geographical conditions the aquatic organisms have adapted themselves to this temperature range 25 to 30 degrees centigrade so they can survive only in this temperature range 25 to 30 degrees centigrade now over the years they have adapted themselves to this temperature now for any man made reason if this temperature limit is overshooted for example if the upper limit is 30 degree we take the temperature of the water to 38 degree celsius then the water will become too high then obviously these aquatic organisms will die or if the lower limit is 25 degree celsius and if the temperature goes down to 15 degree or 10 degree then obviously these aquatic organisms will die so this is basically the thing that the temperature tolerance limit the temperature tolerance limit of aquatic organisms is quite limited okay so how it gets disturbed for example i have you know i have discussed this case in the my previous video also for example in the badarpur thermal power station if i talk about so what happens in a thermal power plant obviously from an outside water source there is a canal there from that canal water is being pushed inside the power plant that water is converted into steam that steam runs the turbine then that steam is again converted back into water that water is quite hot it is very logical that it would be hot because it was converted into steam then that hot water is cooled in a cooling plant and despite after that cooling point the water is sufficiently warm now that warm water is again released back in the canal now that warm water is very hot and that increases the temperature of the canal from 10 to 15 degree centigrade and when the temperature of the canal gets increased by 10 to 15 degree centigrade then obviously the organisms the aquatic organisms which are living in this canal they have adapted themselves to 25 to 30 degree centigrade and now what is happening here that immediately the temperature has been made to 10 to 15 degree so the temperature in which they found themselves is 10 to 15 degree centigrade higher than their upper limit 30 degree centigrade so now obviously those aquatic organisms will die so this is one factor how temperature disturbs the productivity because when aquatic organisms will die obviously the productivity will decrease one more factor how temperature you know disturbs this aquatic ecosystem there is one concept known as dissolved oxygen what is this dissolved oxygen friends what happens in this dissolved oxygen that um, if the temperature of the water is high then you would say here that dissolved oxygen is inversely proportional to temperature so if the temperature is high dissolved oxygen will be less okay if the temperature is high dissolved oxygen would be less so obviously here you can see the temperature is getting higher by 10 to 15 degree centigrade then the dissolved oxygen will decrease and that dissolved oxygen is very important for the sustenance of the aquatic organisms living in that aquatic ecosystem now let's talk about dissolved oxygen no no normally fresh water system has 10 ppm of dissolved oxygen in them by weight they have 10 ppm of dissolved oxygen in them by weight that much is sufficient okay now how this uh, air this oxygen is coming inside the water you know suppose this is a water body and above is air 
So obviously at this air and water interference, some amount of oxygen is entering this aquatic ecosystem and also some amount of oxygen is leaving this aquatic ecosystem. So at the air water interface, some amount of oxygen is also entering the water system, aquatic ecosystem and some amount of oxygen is also leaving the aquatic ecosystem. So this is one way the uh, method of doing that is quite different. I will tell you sometimes later. <laughs> then one more thing friends, photosynthetic activity is going on inside the you know, photic zone. So when photosynthetic activity is going on, then oxygen is produced. And in addition to this photosynthetic activity, respiration is also going on. So when respiration is going on, friends, then obviously the aquatic organisms are going to consume that dissolved oxygen and they are going to release carbon dioxide. So during this respiration process, when these aquatic organisms are taking in, they are respiring oxygen, then obviously they are taking the dissolved oxygen in water. So if they are going to respire oxygen, the level of dissolved oxygen in water is going to decrease. And that is maintained at around 10 ppm through a proper cycle. This cycle get disturbed due to sunlight disturbances, temperature disturbances, as I already told you here. Okay, so how I am going to connect it with temperature? When temperature increases, dissolved oxygen decreases. And 10 ppt is ideal if it goes down to 3 to 5 ppm. Or even lower than that, then aquatic organism will start dying in large numbers. These aquatic ecosystems will start dying in large numbers. Okay, friends. So, this is the concept of dissolved oxygen, friends. Then next thing we are going to talk about is winter kill. But before winter kill, I am going to talk about invasive species, friends. What are invasive species? Invasive species are actually those species, friends, which are very aggressive in their approach and they are not naturally found in that particular ecosystem. For example, if we talk about water hyacinth, it is found, it is a very deadly aquatic species which is found in many regions of India and it when it reaches a particular region, particular aquatic ecosystem of India, it actually eradicates the other species at a very faster pace. Okay, so the local species are not able to compete with this water hyacinth. So basically invasive species are those species which are going to have a negative effect on the aquatic ecosystem and they are, they will make it difficult for the local species to survive. So invasive species, they compete for food, that is uh, the food preserved through photosynthesis, they compete for planktons, then they compete for dissolved oxygen and they consume the food and dissolved oxygen at a very fast pace. And then the dissolved oxygen and food is not available for other aquatic organisms. So they start dying. One thing is winter kill. What is actually this winter kill? Suppose this is a water body, friends. Okay. What happens in a winter season that ice gets deposited at the surface of this water body. Okay. When the ice gets deposited on the surface of this water body, then the air water interface gets obstructed. This air water interface gets obstructed. So obviously, the oxygen that was coming inside the aquatic system and the oxygen that was going outside the aquatic system through this air water interface that is blocked. So the one way of oxygen coming into the aquatic system is blocked. Second way of the oxygen in the aquatic system is the activity of photosynthesis. Through photosynthesis, oxygen is produced, dissolved oxygen is produced. But the problem is that we need light for this photosynthesis. And when snow forms the upper level, the light from the sun is not going to penetrate inside this water. And when this light is not going to penetrate in this water, photic zone will not be there. Photic zone will not be there. Photosynthesis will not happen. No food, no oxygen. So suppose this winter snow is getting deposited on the surface of the water. Now there is no photosynthesis. Now there is no food, no oxygen, no more dissolved oxygen. So if this water is shallow and not deep, so if the water is shallow, the amount of food and oxygen available will be very less and it will get consumed too quickly by the available aquatic organisms. And when that available oxygen and food vanishes, obviously the aquatic organisms are going to die. In the other scenario, if this water is quite deep, so if the water is deep, then the amount of dissolved oxygen and food will be a bit higher. So this can sustain the aquatic system, aquatic ecosystem for a certain long period of time. 
But if in that time, if this upper layer of ice is not gone, then obviously when the available amount of oxygen and food vanishes, the aquatic organism will again start dying. So winter kill is a process that when the available oxygen and food vanishes, then no more oxygen and food is producing because no light is penetrating, no photosynthesis is happening, aquatic organisms start dying. This process is known as winter kill. Okay friends, this is formed in cold areas. So these are the important factors which produce, which affect the productivity of a particular ecosystem. If you have any of your suggestions about this video, you can comment and tell me friends. Please like this video if you really liked it. Okay. And one thing is very common. Please subscribe to my channel friends. Please share these videos on your Facebook and Instagram profile. That will help me to get some views friends. If you want to help me, you can do by doing this thing. So thank you for watching friends. Have a great day. Goodbye and keep studying properly.